I'm JW Spencer and welcome to my channel. Today I want to help you so you can help me so I can help my wife who suffers from in severe intestinal damage. We're going to be um, eating seafood cake, um, crab cake, a crabby patty, all right? Gluten-free, we're using egg whites as a filler and it's really, really good. If you go to a restaurant, chances are you'll likely get a crab cake that's full of bleh. You know, it's like eating a mush, like a hush puppy with a, maybe has garlic in it. Blech. Try this. I guarantee you will like it. And if you have somebody who is gastrointestinal compromised, they will love it too. And uh, let's we'll get on the road. American Southwest, deep in the heart of the Texas Hill Country near the mystical land of the Enchanted Rock. Welcome to my little corner of the internet. I'm J.W. Spencer, and this is my Vision Quest. Yeah, I am still painting. I am still drawing. I haven't shown very much of that recently, and well, it is what it is. We're in a pandemic. And some of that is, you know, you can only get better at something if you continue to practice at it. You know, you practice and you'll make improvements over time. And that's where I am. <laughs> um, I'm getting there. But what I am doing, um, my goal here is I want to help you so you can help me so I can help my wife. Okay. You can help me by subscribing and watching my videos. I'm making this specifically for my wife. It's a Krabby Patty, right? And watching um, YouTube University and a lot of really good chefs on YouTube and uh, the Culinary Institutes of America, learning the basics and um, getting back to uh, French technique. I mean, I, I would say culinary arts is very much like um, the graphic arts or um, learning how to paint, right? There are techniques that are just good techniques, the basics that you have to have down when you paint. And you also have to have the basics down when you cook. The most important tools of a painter are brushes and the most important tools of a cook are knives or the preparatory you know, tools of the kitchen. And the medium is, in cooking, is your ingredients. Or the medium in art are your paints. And it's largely the same thing. I mean, your, your plate is a canvas and you're putting your paint, your ingredients, cooked, prepared, on that canvas, preparing it in a way where it's visually appealing, it smells good, it involves more than just um, a visual orgasm, for lack of a better word, right? You're, you, you are not, you're exciting the senses. You got um, sight and taste and smell. And taste is that last piece of it. But one of the things that's really a challenge when you're cooking for someone who needs that extra supplement is um, taking or being mindful about what you're cooking. In my wife's case, it's more likely than not, it's going to be gluten-free or it's going to be um, what they call gluten-limited. Croissant rolls, are, my wife loves croissant rolls. It has a very high uh, oil content because of the butter <laughs> that's like layered. You know, you fold. How you make croissant rolls is you t take bread dough, put butter on it, layer the bread dough, and then fold it and fold it and fold it and fold it. And eventually becomes a croissant roll. And a croissant is formed in a crescent. It's not a flat thing like you buy at some grocery stores. Um, I, I don't think they can legitimately call those croissant roys if they're not croissant. <laughs> in personal opinion. I think that's a French law too. Really. 
Um, but back to where I was going. Um, I want to do this a little bit differently today is I'm going to play a video top down of me in the kitchen preparing this. And just to warn you, that's what I'm doing. So let's get into it here. All right. So here's my workspace in the kitchen. Right now, that is a piece of salmon. I am cutting the skin off the salmon. Just remove the skin. And I want I like bite-sized chunks, and my wife does too. I mean, what's the point of having seafood cake if you're going to have, like, you know, mushed up stuff? You want to taste the salmon. There's chunks of salmon in this. It's really good this way. So I'm making, trying to make them nearly the same size so they all cook the same way. So if I cook one for three minutes, it'll be done, you know, before you put it in the oven and finish it off for 20, 30 minutes. But so there's a salmon. All right. Next up is lump crab. Now, I... I I like lump crab. That's probably about 12 ounces of lump crab, 12 ounces of fish. A lump crab, probably about $10 US. The next is shrimp. Now, you see, a, a pound of shrimp, you're going to take four ounces of shrimp, deveined and tail off. Take four ounces, put it in the food processor. That's going to make your shrimp mousse. The remainder of 12 ounces are going into the seafood cake. So Sam, I'm using Sam crab and shrimp. You don't, you can use other things if you want. And I really like fresh dill. So here I am, I'm trying to take off the, the leaves. And my technique is that of someone who, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to get the leaves, not the stems. I don't want the, the green stems in there. They're, they're woody. I want the leaves that has the uh, fresh dill flavor. And because we're, what we're going to do is put it in the food processor here with a little bit of egg white and make a shrimp mousse. All right. So, you know, here I am. I'm watching it too. Just to just prove I'm I'm doing this. If you want to call this live comment, it's live comment. All right. Live comment of me. Trying to cook. Here, let me. There. A little bit of egg white. I'd say, you know, I I wound up using maybe two two eggs worth. <laughs> if you took an egg and did the back and forth, you know, and got separated the egg. But I didn't have anything. I wasn't going to make a hollandaise sauce or something, you know. So I figured I got a carton of egg whites because I like to supplement my eggs in the morning with egg whites anyhow. <laughs> I'll take one egg and mix in some extra egg whites so I get a little, bit, a little bit more volume. One thing I forgot to do, though, is I forgot to do the panko first. Luckily for me, I have a second food processor. I got it out real quick and stuck um, the panko breadcrumbs into the food processor because panko if you know what panko it's it's a really rough japanese style breadcrumb but um for this particular dish uh you want them to be a very fine breadcrumb really fine because you're going to fry it in a skillet so our shrimp mousse here is still going i had you saw that i had a little bit of more egg whites and uh here i'm going to start up the panko breadcrumbs and we're going to let those go and then basically what we really want to do here, um, I guess we're taking off or out the, uh, the shrimp mousse. And I have uh, all my seafood ingredients there. We're just going to add the shrimp mousse. This shrimp mousse is a binder. We're not putting breadcrumbs inside to hold these uh, seafood cakes together. Uh, when they cook, this, uh, believe it or not, that green tint you see there is, I mean, you'll see it at the end. And 
it's translucent. It kind of just cooks away and you don't, you see the fish. I mean, I, there's big chunks of, of salmon and shrimp and crab inside there and it tastes really, really good. That's what I'm shooting for. All right. And the next thing we're doing here, I'm taking the panko breadcrumbs and we're going to stick them in this little dish so I can cover the, uh, the seafood, the Krabby Patties when they're done. And we're just going to back off here, put some stuff away. I don't know why I filmed me putting stuff away. I, you know, from start to finish is what I was going for, I guess. All right, so we put the food processors away. And let's take a look here. Oh, we're just going to mix in, you see, just, just mixing in the shrimp mousse with the fresh dill and egg white. We're just going to combine that with the seafood. And it doesn't really have to look like, um, you don't want it to mush, right? I, I hate mush. You want it to have a bite when you bite into your seafood cake, your Krabby Patty, you want that Krabby Patty to have some texture in it, which is why they have the bigger pieces of fish. And I didn't cut up the shrimp. They were just de-veined tail off and I put the whole shrimps in there. They're going to, they're going to cook, right? So what I'm doing here is I'm using an egg mold, believe it or not. I did not use a biscuit mold. A biscuit mold would probably be maybe an inch or so thick. This is maybe a half inch thick, which is, I figured I'm putting the seafood cake and I'm hitting just the top of that. So it's, you know, it's maybe a half inch thick It's for cooking an egg in a skillet. All right. Using a cast iron skillet for that. But for this, I'm just putting panko. I'm just patting panko. I got it on the bottom and on the top. And what we really want to do is just, you know, take it off there and then press down as you lift up your mold, whether you use an egg mold or something else. If you use a, um, a biscuit mold, your biscuit mold may be a little bit more thick and that's okay. It's up to you. However you like your Krabby Patties, right? And all I'm doing really is just taking that panko and I'm just making sure because it is a shrimp mousse. So it's, it's really delicate and light and it is wet and we're going to drop it in the pan. And there we go. We're frying. That's a little bit of butter, a little bit of olive oil, and a stainless steel. I am not using a ceramic cookware for this. And in my pan, I can get three of these things in at one time. And, you know, I really like this style of cooking. You know, um, I, I, yeah, it's butter and it's olive oil. Olive oil is good for you and butter is good for you. <laughs> Don't listen to the people who say use oleo or margarine or use butter. Butter is better. Like bacon. Ba everything's better with bacon and butter. <laughs> you, you should know that, right? <laughs> All right. So I have my, my three Krabby Patties. I did those and then I did the rest of them. So you see there, I got them in my cookie sheet. I have a, um, a cooler, a, a rack on that 350 degrees gas mark four, if you're in the UK and maybe 20, 30 minutes, depending on your preference of doneness. I, I go on the lighter side cause I still like to have, a. it has to be cooked, but it has not to be overcooked is, is my thing. So we're going to take that Krabby Patty and put it on a plate. Now, this might be interesting for some people and not so much, but I was just doing this for the camera <laughs> saying, you know what? I want to have some of this, but I like tartar sauce with Krabby Patty with a seafood or a crab cake. I also really love lime pickles. I think lime pickles, if you never had a lime pickle, you cannot buy them at the store. You have to make them. And that's a really, that's like a four or five day process to make lime pickles. I'll have to do that someday. I had a friend who shared those lime pickles with somebody in Estonia, and I guess it's all the rave now in Estonia is to make lime, lime pickles. But here, look at the Krabby Patty here. Look at this. You cannot see, 
you know, I was talking about the green texture and there you go. All right. And you see that oil dripping there is after I cooked them, the excess oil found fell off the Krabby Patty. So, you know, and there you have it. That's basically how I make Krabby Patties. And I took the rest of those Krabby Patties and I put them in a little vacuum bag, you know, suck the air out of them, put them in the freezer and they'll keep for quite a while. Um, I don't have to go to the freezer section of a seafood market and buy those nasty crab patty things that my dad buys. Ugh, dad, Ugh. these are better. And you can, and you can, like I said, you can change that filling up to the fish, the kind of fish that you like. Um, I would suggest salmon is a really good compliment to, to crab and shrimp. Anyhow, um, I guess that's it for today's video. I hope that you found this video helpful. Um, I, I think that the Krabby Patty here that, uh, I, I introduced to you today, learning the techniques of cooking those basic techniques. Um, I'm not a professional chef, not going to pretend <laughs> no, no false errors. All right. But when you have to cook at home for someone you love and cook things in a way with love, you're going to take that extra step. And I'm, I hope that I'm showing that for you today is that I not only want this to be helpful for my wife, but I want you, it, it has to be helpful for you too. And I know there are many people out there who or their spouses are going through an ordeal as well. And this is one way you can help them. I'd encourage you to do that. Or, or maybe you have kids who our kids did not like seafood. Um, I think they do now though. Anyhow, I hope you have a great day and uh, take care until next time. See ya.